Hi guys, so today we are going to make, well I'm going to make, Maha Blanca con mais. It is a Filipino dish that I love to order, but I never make it at home. So now I'm going to try to make it based off my Lola's cookbook, Let's Cook with Nora. Nora Daza was a pioneer TV chef in the Philippines and her cookbook is considered a classic in every Filipino household. Cooking runs deep in my family and we owe it all to my Lola Nora. I miss her so much and I want to bring back some of her favorite recipes and her passion for good food. This is Cooking with My Lola. And I really wanted to push Philippine cuisine because it's the one that we really have that's our, really our own. So Maha Blanca is a traditional Filipino recipe and I always order this out, but I never really make it at home. I tried this recipe based off my grandmother's cookbook and I thought, why not share it with you guys? So today I'm gonna be making it from scratch. Right here we have the niog and that is obviously coconut meat but a lot of people don't understand or maybe i learned this that there's two types of coconut one is the young coconut which is buko in filipino and the other is the mature coconut which is niog so today we have niog and i'm going to be making a coconut milk and a coconut cream so first off Right here, it says, in a bowl, combine grated coconut and half a cup of warm water and mash and squeeze to extract. We have to kind of massage the niog. And I'm going to extract the coconut cream, which we will use for the latik. Muscle strength is needed. Okay, so this is the second batch of the coconut. And I know that this can actually be bought in a can, but I just wanted to make it from scratch just to stay true to the recipe of my Lola. And also so that I can appreciate that this is actually a pretty tedious process to make latik. So if someone makes latik for you, that means they really are out to impress you. <sighs> okay, now that's done. We squeezed all of that coconut cream. I'm gonna jump here to step three. It says, put the coconut cream in a saucepan and boil until the water evaporates and the oil comes out. So that's actually what latik is made out of. It is really separating that oil and solid from the coconut cream extra. So here we go. Oops. I guess that's fine. It's my recipe anyway and my channel. So this is two niogs and we added two cups of water to get the coconut milk. See, so there's much more juice in this. And it's a thinner liquid, obviously. And this is gonna be the base of the Maha Blanca. Fun little fact, it's called Maha Blanca because it's white. Okay, so this is the final coconut milk. It's more liquid and it's thinner. This is the coconut cream that's been cooking. And while we let that cook, this is actually how it's gonna turn out. See, so here are the solids and this is the oil. So don't throw away this coconut oil because we're gonna use it to brush the banana leaves, which is gonna line, you know, the Maha Blanca. And this is the latik. We're gonna put it on top. Okay, that's the final form. So I learned a new word, singeing. We are gonna singe the banana leaves. And what it does is it sterilizes it and it just brings out the aroma. So you can see here the color. I hope it doesn't burn. Um, it kind of becomes more s slightly shiny. Okay, on both sides. Actually, it's okay if it slightly burns because it's because it adds to the effect. Done! <laughs> okay, then we're gonna get a tray and I wanna line it with the beautiful banana leaf. I'm just gonna cut around it. So this Maha Blanca dish is very close to my heart because my Lola Nora used to make it when I would visit her and I would watch her create it. So this is for you, Lola. So that's done. So next up, we're gonna have the cornstarch mixture. So we have half a cup of sugar. We're gonna put it in one bowl. And then half a cup of cold water. And we're gonna use Maya cornstarch. What I love about this brand is that my grandmother also used it back in the day in the 60s. And in fact, when I met the people behind it, they said that your Lola really helped establish and build our brand. So it's also very close to my heart. It's something that I trust.
Um, I feel like it's a secret passed down for generations, I guess. I think one thing I also learned from my grandmother and from my aunt and uncles is that when you bake, it has to be very precise as opposed to when you cook. When I cook, I'm very tancha tancha lang. But when I bake, it really has to be all the way to the brim. And I need to practice that. So see, this isn't enough. This isn't half a cup. I need to add more. And don't be afraid to get messy. I'm just talking to myself. There we go. So half a cup of that, and we mix it here. And I also learned that you have to have cold water when you mix with cornstarch so that it is able to dissolve and doesn't kind of clump up. Just kind of mix that in. So we have our cornstarch mixture and our coconut milk, and we're gonna put it in a saucepan over low heat. So we have our coconut milk, and we have to bring it to a simmer. I was about to add this, but I took a peek at the book, and you have to wait for it to simmer. So let's wait for that. What the cornstarch does is really give it that bouncy, sticky texture. Okay, now I'm gonna add a 3 fourths cup of corn kernel. So you could just buy that in a can. It's a very simple flavor when you think about it, but to make it is a bit tedious. But I would like to call myself a purist, so I like making everything from scratch. So you just have to cook this for around six to seven minutes and wait for it to get to its final consistency. Having my grandmother's book here with me makes me feel a bit safer. I don't know why when we started this, I was feeling nervous or like semi-insecure because I don't know, I feel like when you're teaching how to cook, you need to already know it. And I'm here in front of you guys, not really you know, an expert, but I can almost imagine her telling me, you have to taste it and then adjust to your flavor. Wow, it's really thick now. Okay, so I'm gonna taste this. It's getting there. So now I'm gonna use the coconut oil to line the pan so that it doesn't stick. The next step is pour the warm coconut mixture into the pan. Guys, don't pour it by the handle. That's a rookie mistake. As long as it tastes good, no one's gonna know. And really just get everything so you don't waste any of that hard and squeezed gnocchi. Here we go, it's coming to life. I'm getting excited. Okay, so it's done, but we have to wait for it to cool down. And also we're making our latik. So let's just leave it to cool. So after you wait for it to kind of cool down and set, it's gonna look like this. And now we're gonna transfer it. And my latik, this is the final form of it. I'm gonna cut a square and show you guys how to eat it. Have it, the Maha Blanca con maíz. Now is the moment of truth. I'm going to judge my own cooking. I need to get all of the bits in there. Mm. It's actually very light, very flavorful, and I love the balance of the corn and the coconut. Corn and coconut should be used more in more dishes because it's delicious. The latik gives it that extra crunch and texture. Okay, now I'm remembering why I love this dish when my Lola made it. And don't worry if you're afraid and you don't want to do the tedious process of really squeezing the nyog. You can just buy canned coconut milk and no one's gonna know. Now I'm gonna have my last bite. <laughs> this is such an easy recipe. I hope you guys try it out. Maha Blanca con maíz. <laughs>